Hello, welcome, and it's a beautiful day today. Thank you for joining, whether you're live or watching on the YouTube after the fact. Here we are. Hey, what's up, Gonzo, my man? Good day to you. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for being here, as always, and thank you for the soundtrack. Uh, I think we got music today, um, showing up on my monitor, at least, so yay. Put that back in the mix. We'll check off good old sound check. <clears throat> and yeah, um, thank you for being here. And the agenda for today, we're going to go ahead and look at a quick update. Uh, we're not just going to look at it. We're going to do a quick update to the Mo MOMW post-processing pack. We're going to translate that into the 5.10.3 update to the website itself, which we're going to time box and get out real quick. Um, we're going to look at GitLab issues with review to close tag and close them as needed. We're going to look at my new Lua mod. Ooh, what is it? Um, and then we, as a project, are fully focused on 6.0 and getting that out there and making sure it's awesome. Um, and there'll be some more notes on that when we get to it. And then, yeah, as always, we'll deploy the website as we need to. So jumping right into it. Excuse me. Uh, we got some good feedback from Abdu. Um, and apparently, uh, Gonzo has done some user testing. And the FXAA, also known as Fast Approximate, anti-aliasing shader not really needed when you're also using the fantastic follower aa by waria um so you know um we're gonna go ahead and remove that we got some other feedback from abdu too as uh, as well regarding the the placement of the depth of field and um ambient occlusion shaders we're still testing that out um as i understand gonzo did a little bit of testing um and it was a little inconclusive uh i know that what we have now I've played a lot with, and I think it looks quite good, so I'm hesitant to jump in and make a change like that. Um, but for now, we're going to just disable this FXAA, so let's just do that. Um, and then if we find out later on that the DOF order needs to change or something like that, you know, we can just do that. Post-processing pack. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Go ahead and FXAA, and actually, make sure we don't miss anything. Uh, let's actually open a new terminal here. FX, make sure I don't miss anything. Woo. Uh, yeah, let's uh, just. We just want to find it. FXAA in the README and web folders. We don't want to look in the whole project. So, yeah, really just in two places. All right. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, where is the other one? Index HTML. So, web. Yo! What's up, Erm? <laughs> thanks for joining, man. I'm so glad you're here today. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, thanks for the procedural select uh, suggestion on the um, signpost mod, too. I think I am going to actually do that for, like, ones that don't have a, a hand-picked destination but I'll get there later on but yeah yeah I am gonna actually try to do that for some reason I just thought it wasn't gonna work and discarded the idea but you mentioning it made me reconsider because as of right now there's no behavior for for Tamro we built so it'd be better to have some janky random placement than nothing I feel like so yeah good thank you erm Ooh, we're gonna have to like jump ahead here <laughs> um but just to di divert a little a uh, little bit right now, um, I want to... So the idea is... Uh, see, I have to pull up the code now. The idea is you've got um, these objects, right, that are signposts in the game. And what I've done is I've, I've made tables, basically, that have a cell and a POS, you know, for the, the cell for, like, the, the XY grid, and then the POS for the player XYZ, and then eventually rotation once I figure out how to actually capture that. Hey, good morning, Sophia. Thank you for joining. Glad you're here today. We're just jumping ahead as usual. Um, so, yeah, um, going back up here, though, you can see, like, I've gone to Aldrun, for example, and I picked a spot, like, right by the gate. Um, but, like, for the random procedural point, I feel like it would just be somewhere by the signpost itself. Food for thought. And we're going to go back to here and actually finish this change that I started. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we're just removing fast approximate anti-aliasing because it's redundant, um, not because it's a bad shader. Just a follower AA is a bit better, 
and, and makes it redundant. So, there we go. Okay, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So, that was the initial idea. Right? And, and, and you nailed it right there. The whole mod is inspired by Witcher 3's fast travel system, which I feel like is good. It's not like overly cheaty, like I'm sorry, in Elder Scrolls and Fallout games, you like open the menu and click on a thing and you go there. You know, that works well, um, and I enjoy the game that way, but, you know, um, I'm trying to do something a little different here. Kind of like Witcher. Thank you, Gonzo. Um, that's good feedback. Yeah, yeah, so that's true. I was worried about, like, um, I don't know. Hey, Herjax, welcome, dude. Thanks for joining um, Erm, regarding that, I was thinking it would be, like, kind of janky to just end up in a, in a random spot, but actually when I say it out loud and when I think about it some more, that could, like, add some charm to the mod, kind of, you know? I don't know. Maybe random points for everything by the signpost are the way to go, but the problem is some of the destinations, for example, Mount Cand, don't have signposts there. I actually had to place an activator in Mount Cand to get something to, like, lock onto to know the player had been there. Sector, good morning! Thank you for joining! Um... Something to think about. We'll get, we're going to get to that mod later on, but that's something to think about, and I appreciate the suggestion um, and the and the the bantering about it, Erm, because the more I think about it, just to randomly pop in the player somewhere could work really well. Right, exactly. Yeah, there's posts pointing to Mount Canned, no posts near it, and so what I'm doing is... Ah, uh, we're jumping ahead. All right, this is, this is fine. Uh, global.lua. So one of the things I'm doing here, if we look at the code, um, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Player.lua. If we look at the code here, zoom in a little bit. Now, all right, we're jumping ahead to the last thing first. Here we go. If we look at the code, um, I am like looking for an activator to know that the player has been there. And when the player has been there, I, you know, log it to a variable. Mount Canned had nothing. So if I look at signs, I have like a, you know, a for loop that I'm using. I dump the Morrowind game data with Delta plugin, do some Unix foo on it, and then I get a nice list of things. Big thanks to Altariel for telling me how to key into the TR stuff there. But yeah, as you can see here, so you got active sign for like everything, right? These are the vanilla signs. Oh, that's the oh, search through all exteriors. Hmm, okay, yeah. Hmm, that's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea, and it is a general approach that could work. Um, but yeah, so the pro so, and there is a door in Mount Cand. That's like the only thing that's in that cell, really. There's like a door to a to the cavern, I think. Um, but yeah, you can see here there's some other cells too that are destinations that didn't have signposts. Like in Saran, there's a signpost, but it's like awkwardly a couple cells away. Um, the ghost gate as well. Like, I couldn't at least see the sign around there, so I had to just key in on the gate switch. Uh, Mount Asernabibi, same deal. There's the shrine, no signpost. Um, but if we have the names, which we do, because I have hard-coded them, though, so I don't know. Yeah, so it gets a little bit tricky. I feel like, I feel like for the vanilla stuff, I'm just, since I've already solved the problem of hand-placing, we're good to go. But as you can see here, there's a lot of TR points. There's 89 TR points, in fact. Um, so, like, hand-placing these, no two ways about it, is going to be painful. You know, and then TR's got an update coming out. So we'll have to revisit this. Um, yeah, I feel, I feel like using the TR areas, though, as a way for a general approach is, is nice. And then we can fix them as needed, right? So the way my code works is if, if the map result here is nil, then... It doesn't do this now, but what it's gonna, what it will do is it'll take the general procedural approach. If it's got a, a, you know an appropriate table here with coordinates, then it's gonna go that route. Um, Ebonar here, for example, that cell and that coordinate. So, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting for sure to write to code up the general approach because otherwise, you know, the mod is very. If we look at the code here, you know, like this is the core logic right here. That's really it. A couple of events I'm using for the player and, and some cheats here for the console. Um, yeah, you know, that's really it. All right. Um, we actually just 
removed FXAA, but we never um, actually published it or did a release. Gonzo mentioned it could be worth making a note about FXAA being available. Um, in the interest of being thorough, I can agree with that approach. Um, ooh, uh, hard code coordinates on the Placing an activator? Yeah, uh, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> um, I could just put like a an ex, uh, you know an invisible activator there. Um, that's a really good. Hmm, I don't know. That's maybe before I because I haven't actually launched 1.0 of the mod, but maybe before I do that, that's something. Um, I don't love her. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, right now you can patch it by editing the Lua text, but uh, that's a, that's actually a good idea, and I think I will do that. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Word. One thing I will need I will need to pick your brain on, Erm, is I have n absolutely no idea how to. Jeez, what am I doing here? Don't try this at home. I have actually absolutely no idea how to. So I'm like passing it the table. You know, um, in your idea, it would just be the coordinates of whatever thing. But I have no idea how to, like, rotate and orient the player in the right direction, you know? And we'll see later when I actually run the mod, but, like, when I have hard-coded results like this, I want to orient the player properly. Otherwise, it's just like, whoa, where the heck am I, you know? Um, and it's not, with OpenMW Lua, it's not totally clear for me. Like, I guess rotation is just a vector 3. So I can just, like, put a vector 3 there with the coordinates that I need. Then my problem is, how do I get the coordinates I need? But anyways... Jumping all over today, folks. Wow, we, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I'm gonna, in the interest of keeping it simple, we're gonna omit any mention of F FXAA. And curious parties can read the documentation and notice the shaders there. And um, you know, um, yeah. Oh, the API has changed. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm fine with that. Um, to be honest with you, I was mentioning to Gonzo yesterday. We gotta like change the stuff that sucks. You know. All right. So just for now, we're gonna say remove. FXAA from recommended shader chain. Okay. Now we'll watch the GitLab robots build the thing. And once that's good to go, we'll publish a release. And then we'll update the website. And we want to do it quick so we don't spend the whole stream doing that. And then it's back to the serious business. Yeah. Transform in 0 0.40. So that's what, okay, so that's what trips me up. Like, there's no clear way from the API, and maybe I'm missing it, unless it's just util.transform, but it's not clear to me, like, how do I make a transform, an arbitrary transform, right? Again, where the player is, like, oriented in a specific way, not relative to where they are now, really, because that feels complicated. All right. So if we look at... No mention of FXAA except in the commit message. Um, that's a release, folks. All right, so here we go. Um, let's make a tag here, 1.1. Push it to master. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Okay, I did see rotate XYZ methods there on the transform. So that's what it be, I think. Yeah, util transform. Yeah, yeah. There's rotate x y z. Yeah. Okay. So then th that's easy enough, honestly. Then the it, I guess I'll go in game and maybe I can use the Lua console to find out what's my because when you do um, mw script get rotation, I, it's like some nonsense number radian that it gives you. I think vector plus angle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So mw script gives you the angle. I think. Um, Okay. I'm almost certainly going to be hitting you up about that. <laughs> uh, let's close that. Where are we here? Uh, let's see. Did our pipeline work? We pushed the new version. And the GitLab robots beat us to it, I think. Yeah, here we go. Just passed. So let's uh, go to the website here. Version 1.0 be gone. Long live version 1.1. There you go. Script. 
angles, but that has issues. Okay, yeah. Gimbal lock. Got you. Thank you, Arm. Really appreciate that uh, feedback. Um, because the, uh, you know, that is like one of the last unsolved problems. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. One axis only, and I would think that's X axis. Um, I just want to point them in the right direction. You know what I'm saying? So. I suppose if you're looking up when you travel or, you know, um, we don't need to care about that. You can't be looking up too much, really, because you got to be looking at the signpost. All right. Um, and then let's go down here and see that the shader chain now is absent. The one we took out. Cool. Right on. Now we're going to update the website. The other website. Oh me, oh my, so slow. Yeah, for sure. That's what I was thinking too. Thank you, Erm. Thank you for that comment. Yeah. I was thinking that too, right? Like just horizontal, right? And I think that's X. Um we want to point them in the right direction, but like, you know, if they're this away or whatever. Um it's whatever. Now let's see real quick what post Processing. What mod lists have this? I think like almost everything. Uh, Graph hogs. Hey, Ferris. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for joining. So glad you're here today. We're just, uh, doing what we do update the website and uh we're actually like uh having some spitballing about the signpost fast travel discussing ideas that we could maybe proceduralize it or whatever anyway thanks for joining so glad you're here dude all right we're gonna say Come on, you can do it, little buddy. There you go. Potato language server. And we're just going to say, uh, you know, removed FXAA. Something like that. Did, did you know actually astute viewers will notice that we didn't actually make that change uh, so the extra gonzo did most of this work so I'm like where is it <laughs> okay FXAA Ooh. I just saw a mosquito hold up The biggest mosquito I've ever seen was just like flying around my office and I clobbered it. Thanks, Gonzo. I was looking for this uh, bit right here, post-processing pack. Uh, we wanted to remove FXAA out of there and now let's just make sure I got everything here. FXAA. Oh, okay. You know what? We may have some stuff we can delete. Check it. Yeah. Deleted. All right. 
Stuff to delete. Stuff to change. Stuff to inform. Let's just... Uh... Awesome. Appreciate it, Gonzo. Yeah, that would be the final thing, but I think we can do 5.10.3 with just this. It's worth it to do, and then we can do a 10.4 if we need to. All right. All right, we have updated it. Website update basically done. We probably will shift focus around on that because already got some really great feedback. So while that's all crunching, uh, my new Lua mod, uh, if you're in Discord, you saw the link, uh, signpost fast travel. Inspired, as Erm noted, by the Witcher 3 fast travel system, which if you've never played that game, you can activate the Witcher 3 equivalent of activating the signpost. Um, or I think you just go open the menu, actually, when you're near one. No, you activate the signpost, and it pulls up the map, and you can travel to other signposts that you have been to. Um, my mod takes a little bit of a different approach, where there's no actual GUI that pops up. Rather, you just activate the signpost, and the traveling happens. Um... At this time, it's lacking elapsing time, which is something I wanted to run by people in the Lua channel. Maybe we can look at it right now. Um, uh, there is no uh, handling of undefined travel locations, because as we were looking at before, we've got hand-placed target travel targets based on various things here. But then we got a whole boatload of um, Detail Devil. Hey, welcome. Good day. Thank you for joining. Um, so good to see you today. I hope you're doing well. Um, we got a whole boatload of undefined TR signs, and it would just be kind of neat to, uh, oh, cool, greetings from Ireland, awesome, you gotta say, uh, hi to Daniil, who's in Cork, that's our friend who made, uh, Fargoth's Mountain Hut, by the way, um, but anyways, yeah, we got a whole boatload of undefined TR signposts that we are capturing, and that would be this little bit up here, this little bit of code, um, you know, we are recording TR, so if you start playing before we actually support them, at least the mod will remember that you've been there. Um, I don't know. Let's just look at it. Ooh, but wait. But first, before we submit our website edits to the CI gods, <laughs> the tribunal of CI, let's look at our change. No, wrong link. Come on, man. Updated, remove FXAA shader. Abdu would be proud right here. Boom. All right. I think that's good. Let's ship it. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoops. We are a proper project now, and we don't push to master anymore. <laughs> That's what just failed here. Check it. If I hit the dollar sign. Oh, whoa, whoa. It says, pre-receive hook declined. Back when I was cowboying the project on myself, push to master. No apologies to Todd, but now we need to make a branch. Uh, yeah, right. Well, <laughs> I could still force push, uh, as you know, my dude. <laughs> uh, that's a funny story. Maybe we'll tell it sometime. Name for the new branch. 5.10.3. Once upon a time, yours truly force pushed on some Gonzo's month's worth of work on 6.0. And erased it. But we saved it because Git is awesome. <laughs> that is a true story, friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Yeah. That was one of those, like... You know, those moments where you're just like, oh, shit. Yeah, that was one of those, but... uh 
thankfully it was not my first get rodeo. All right, point release, pat, patch release, 5.10.3. I don't even know what I'm calling these things anymore. Assign it to me. We'll get the reviewers in there. We'll get the Gonzo, Herdrax, Sophie. Anybody else who wants to review? All right. I'm sure this will pass. And when it does, we'll probably uh, <laughs> thank Todd. Yeah. Thank Todd for Git being a clever implemented thing that is mystifying, but it saved my butt. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, when this passes, I think this is the only change that's going to go into this release. So, if I could get my people to approve once CI passes, of course, we'll um, merge and deploy and get that update out there. Okay, now let's play the game for a sec, huh? And we'll look at some fast travel. Ooh, um, yeah, Detail Devil. Thank you. Uh, great question, and thank you for reminding me. Oh, um, so at Sophie's recommendation, actually, uh, I tried out the, let's see here, animation. There's something pretty nice happening um, at the moment which is an open merge request for animation blending. And in fact, the build that I'm playing with right now is an animation blending build. It's albeit a couple commits old, but nonetheless, the feature is there. But uh, what can I say? Let me make sure I've got it turned on. Yeah, smooth animation transitions here in the game section. But uh, let's see if you can notice the difference. We've got uh, completely vanilla animations here. Um, I would say that is like one of the biggest things that's happened in the past week or so for OpenMW, at least. Animation blending is just like a mind-blowing thing. Um, hopefully you can notice the difference here. Wow, hold on, hold on. We need to like de-cheat my cheat character a bit. Uh, let's see the 400. No clipping. All right. Um, honestly, to me, it, like, makes the vanilla animations quite a bit less offensive, you know? Like, especially the hideous running animation. Wait, hold on. Have I replaced that here? No, no, definitely I'm not. Oh, no, I'm just actually just walking. There we go. Leaving the caps on. All right, it's my potato laptop kind of makes it hard to notice. But yeah, I mean, you really have to like play it your, for yourself and see it in action. And I want to do like a side by side of like the jumping and the running and the punching and stuff. Um, but yeah, the animation blending has been like, I'm just playing with it on my Steam Deck and I'm like, wow, wow, you know. Um, so I digress, back to the world of signpost fast traveling. So, um, Again, how it works is there's no UI. You know, I'm trying to be all immersive and stuff, like a cool person. And uh, so you just walk up to the signpost, it says Ebonheart, and you activate it. And if you haven't been to Ebonheart yet, it will just deny you. Um, thankfully, I added some cheats. I added some codes into the... Uh, let's just look at the website. I added some codes into the mod. Let's look at the README. And you can open up the Lua console. So let's do that. Whew. Okay, no more caps lock. Lua mode on. Player context. And then we can um, just go ahead and copy-paste this in here. And this is an interface method I add, added to help me cheat to test the mod. But we have now found all the locations. And, uh, and yeah, so you just, unlike if you played Andromeda's Fast Travel, which will have like a menu that asks you if you want to travel, you're over here, you want to go there, we're going. Um, and then boom. So yeah, I don't have the orientation and obviously my, <laughs> my, how many hours it took calculation is way wrong. Um, so actually that's a good seg segue here. Um, so, so yeah, I have a note here. This produces inaccurate results. 38 hours from, uh, yeah, thank you Gonzo. I, cause so 
it's something I wanted to do for a minute, and I was just struggling with like the concepts of ray casting and stuff. Um, I finally got good and solved that, but I was playing Just Good Morrowind, which was my work in progress mod list for a vanilla Morrowind experience, and I was kind of annoyed at having to walk everywhere, and I felt like touching the signpost to travel to a place you've been that's noted on the signpost is powerful, but not overly cheaty, you know? Um, and I do want to add like a menu mode where you can select from a menu just like in Witcher, you know, it'd be like a crappy version of uh, Kazma's mod, which actually lets you click on the map and stuff. Um, so yeah, um, I don't, you know, my, my, so there's two things about this bit of code that don't work right now. Um, yeah, yeah, so I do too, Detail Devil, thank you. Um, I like the vanilla traveling mechanics, I think they're good, but it can be kind of like tedious, even if you have Zach's awesome Lua Multimark mod and you like allow yourself to teleport everywhere, you still gotta have magic and be able to do magic stuff. Um, this is something, you know, time will pass. As you can see here, I have a note for a random chance to stop midway and spawn enemies like the old Fallout games. You ever played those before? Um, teleport followers, I'm gonna steal that code from Erm, basically, although I feel like we should have like a community third-party library of, of helpful code wheels that everybody basically has to invent when they want to do one thing or another but um yeah this code here doesn't work calculating the distance doesn't work and this right here is a really interesting bit of code because right now we can't change the game time from Lua and so what you can do is some gymnastics to change the game time in MW script like we're doing right here not that. <laughs> um, and maybe this is part of the problem here. So we have this MW script that receives a, a variable called new hour and changes the time to it and then stops the cycle kind of. We change new hour from our Lua right here to our game hour that we've calculated with our horribly wrong maths here. Um, it doesn't work though. This runs silently, and but I feel like this code obviously never executes because the time doesn't change. It's 9 a.m. when we arrive at Balmora. Um, maybe it's because the, the hour I'm giving it is like 30-something, and it's way more than how many hours there are in a day. I don't know. So I think I first should probably focus on fixing this distance calculation. Um, but the other thing, yeah, that, does, that I'm not doing at the moment, it's not that it doesn't work, is the rotation. So... Um, yeah, let's do a little bit of a non-cheaty version of this here. So if I want to forget. Ooh, I thought, are we playing Metroid Prime here for a sec? Haven't been to Ebonhar. Okay, so that's a bug right there. Should say I'm already there. Haven't been to Pelagia. Haven't been to Vivec. Okay. So now if I... I believe Zacky Tills fixes that, by the way. It implements, like, a lot of the stuff like that. The time aspect. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, detail level. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to actually do it in an in MW script, but I don't know. Maybe, like, what I'm, what I'm... Like, maybe this is... Whoops. Maybe this is shoddy, right? Like... Hey, Kuyando. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Haha. <laughs> So glad you're here, and thanks for the tip. And also, Pariah Dog Thirteen, thank you. Um, uh, isn't the whole point of that script stopping time? Welcome, yeah. Uh, so this one right here, we want to change the time based on how far we've gone. Um, you know what? I'm gonna try is just. I'm gonna try setting game hour to something sensible like six. And see if my theory about the game are just straight up being wrong is the problem, right? Let's go ahead and relaunch the game. The day global variable. Hmm, thank you, Koyando. That's a good one to keep in my back pocket. Hmm, also, did I delete my... No, I didn't. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Moved myself because I was derping around. All right. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, loo a P. I find all. Find them all. Uh, and then 
the other interface that I did that I didn't put here is just one that will print all the ones that you found. So when you're not cheating, if you're morbidly curious what you found, um, that, that'll print them. All right. Now, travel to Balmora. Took six hours, right? But if I go game hour... Still 9 a.m., and that's the time it is right when we spawn in. So this Rube Goldberg machine didn't work. The intention here is we're saying game hour is 6. Um, oh, you know what? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, so so that's a good that's a good test. Let's do that actually detail double. Thank you. That'll at least tell us if the script is running, right? Game hour to 6. That's a really good test. Okay. Now we have to recompile the plugin. So we got to close the game. Recompile the plugin. What are you talking about? I'm talking about this. There we go. All right. So if this works, then it should be 6 a.m. when we get to Balmora. No dice. So, new hour, new hour, game hour. I'm sure that this is something like 30 some odd. Uh, type it in the command, please. Okay, <laughs> can do. This is what we want to see, right? Did I? I'm sorry, Gonzo. Did I read? All right. Well, I made this change here. I'm gonna try it again. Um, I'm gonna set game hour to nine. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. I I derped and didn't even see that. Let's see. Eight, uh, nine. Let's try this again. Oh wait. All right, here we go now. 35 hours. Still just after nine. Okay, so yeah, I mean, it's like, I even put a, yesterday, yesterday I put a message box here and that didn't pop up. So I feel like this code, not working like I expect it to, right? Like, if we look in the log here, we're printing the game hour. Is it because it's a float? But then it's like, well, no, because the engine doesn't care, right? I can be like 9.1 and the engine doesn't care. 1.1, right? Like, that takes floats. That works. Um, it's a mystery. But yeah, clearly this code isn't getting executed. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think it would just do like a cast. It would just work. So yeah, but anyway, this bit of code too, if you didn't notice, this is how you, through a global script, you can get a local script on an item, which is my little time machine activator thing here, and access the variables, new hour, which we got right there. But like, it just doesn't work. Hmm. Thank you, Pariah Dog. That's a great question. And so to answer that question, I looked at Andromeda's fast travel. Why don't we do that right now? Uh, which is an existing MW script base implementation of fast travel. And uh, this is effectively their algorithm for doing it. They have the player um, X1 and Y1 are the player X and Y coordinate. Y and Z coordinate are handpicked locations. And then they do effectively this formula... Um, 
this is like to find the distance between two vectors, right? Um, and then you got to get the square root of it, which we're doing here too. Um, they do an arbitrary division against 8,000, but the OpenMW research wiki page, which Sector was so kind as to uh, recommend to check out when I pinged them about it, um, does say time is distance divided by F travel time multiplier GMST, which actually in vanilla uh, Morrowind is like 12,000. So quite a bit more than 8,000. I'm not really sure what, there's no note here about what this is. So in my code, I, I actually use the GMST. This is some gymnastics that I wrote for Natural Character Growth and Decay to take the game time, and uh, which is like a bunch of seconds, and get the game hour. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so then we do game hour plus distance, right? Which is what they're doing right here. Um, game hour plus distance. So I'm wondering, though, if my MW script, well... My MW script is just not running, but let's do something nuclear here. Let's try something crazy now. This should spam the screen. Like with a million messages, if this script is even running at all. Um, well, it, it should spam it for like a couple frames because this item only exists for a few frames. We, we create it, we wait one tenth of a second. Because a one frame, as it says here, a one frame delay is needed before things that are created can be used. That's like just an engine quirk, I guess. Um, yeah, great question. So basically it's a straight for a straight line. Yeah, it's calculated for a straight line. There is a pathfinding API in Lua, so we could get crazy and be like, what is the actual pathfinding distance? Um, future optimization for sure. Does your character's actual movement speed matter? No, but that also is a fantastic idea. Hold on, I'm writing that one down. Because absolutely you should. Um, I'm going to write the other one down too. Do you do calculate for actual path grid versus a line? Those are good suggestions, Pariah Dog 13. Thank you so much. That's awesome. <laughs> Just creating more work for myself, but it will make it a better mod. Yay. All right, um, so now let's try the nuclear approach. I might have just did that, yeah. Shh. All right. Okay. You saw it there. Hello world popped up on the screen. The script did run. That's good. So at least this bit of code, the async unsavable simulation timer to wait one frame or more, one tenth of a second, is working. The script on the thing, on the time machine thing, is running, but we're just never getting here. Um, if new hour is greater than zero. So I wonder if I can percentage G new hour. And the fun continues. I would really like to have this mod finished for 6.0, but you know. No sense rushing these things. Haven't been to Balmora yet. Ooh. Forgot my codes. Hello, zero. Nothing says otherwise. Thank you, Pariah Dog. So, how this is supposed to work? Excellent observation, and clearly you're correct because it printed hello, zero, and it never actually set the game hour. Um, what we're trying to do here is you'll note in the console, right here, we printed 35.07, blah, blah, blah. That is this right here. And we're basically saying, in the MW script for the time machine, which is this script, set new hour to game hour, which we established right here is 35. So technically, it should... Yes, thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, you know what? It's not needed for OpenMW, so I just rebelliously never do it. <laughs> um, maybe this is the problem here, though. Maybe we're nuking it before the script has a... Because the script... 
might need another frame, maybe another tenth of a second before we nuke it. Wait, are you setting new hour to game hour? Correct. Um, why can't you do that in the very script? Um, so, because um, I have to... Uh, that's a great question, um, Pariah Dog. Global start and not bother responding any activator. Mm, wow, I'm getting so much good feedback. I almost don't. <laughs> So, so first off, um, can't, I can't do it in here because the data from where the player is and from where the target is comes from Lua. Technically, if this works as I expect it to, I could simply pass that into here. And that's what I'm trying to do, right? So I'm trying to calculate game hour. Um, and, and, and maybe because game hour is something bigger than 24. Like, what, what happens? Okay. Okay. Hold up. Chocobo music is on. I mean, <laughs> that works. It's 99 o'clock. AKA 3 a.m. If you didn't know. <laughs> so, I mean, that should totally work. I guess it does just kind of add however many hours so that I didn't actually look at the Tata Proof de definition of set game hour. And what that actually does, but yeah. So I mean, technically, I feel like this should work. Um, so Ferris, you're talking about this one right here. Make this a global, huh? Yeah, you're probably right. Right? Like I should just, and then I wouldn't have to have this async hackness. I honestly, um, I get why this is in the API, right? Like you don't want the API to force you to wait one frame. Um, cause that could be catastrophic. You need to wait a frame, you do it yourself, but oof, this is a little... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Ferris. I think you're totally right. Okay. I didn't either, right? Like, I, when I typed 99 in there, I was totally expecting that to be like, you know, get, go scratch or whatever. Especially cause OpenMW is pickier with MW script. Okay, I'm gonna take your idea, Ferris. That is a great idea. It can, Pariah Dog, it totally can be done in Vanilla Morrowind. Check it. It has been done in Vanilla Morrowind. It's called Andromeda's Fast Travel. The thing that cannot be done in Vanilla Morrowind is saying, uh, or maybe it can't be done as easily, because I, I would argue that I've code golfed this pretty well, um, is have I been to a cell before, before you teleport, right? With Andromeda's Fast Travel, you spawn into the game, you walk up to the sign post, you click Ebonheart, and you go there. Um, so yeah, totally exists, works for OpenMW, um, in fact, here, let's, for posterity, let's just go ahead and, because I happen to have it installed for testing purposes, let's look at that, um, alright, here we go. The whole idea with doing it in Lua also is to have seamless automatic support for other mods like Tamarill Rebuilt. Which would be like, you have to, as you note in the MW script for this mod, script, uh, they have hand-placed coordinates, you know, so at least with Lua, we have the possibility to randomize it, if we want, which I do want. Okay, so this is how it works, right? Balmora, never been there before. Do I want to go there? Yeah. Boom, and it works. And so hours traveled, 6.2, 3 p.m., like it should be, so... um. Props to Andromeda's uh, fast travel. This mod was an inspiration to, to kind of tell me, you know, hey, this is totally doable in OpenMW. Um, but yeah, and that's, again, that's who I stole the distance formula from, which it works in their code, not in mine. I must have botched something. Okay. So back to my code here. We were going to, that's right, we we're going to implement it as a global script and not attach it to this. So for a real quick, let's, um, yeah, cause there's an MW script, global script. Thank you, Ferris. That's a great idea. Let's copy this out of here. We need this. OBS makes my stuff chug. Let's indent you so you're beautiful. OK. 
Okay. And uh, we don't need time machine anymore. And we're going to do something like... That. Okay. Build it fresh. Fire up the CS. I'm not crazy enough to actually build mods completely from a YAML file with Delta plugin. I wish I were, though. Oh, whoo, whoops. <laughs> I done goofed. What did you do? I didn't load Morrowind.esm. Silly. Or maybe I did? I'm trying it again. Because there definitely should have been start scripts. Yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold up. Uh, alright, well. Ooh, wait. No, this is this is what I want. Excuse me while I remember how the heck to do this. Okay. Cool. What do we just do? All right, we changed the plugin. We got a startup script now. So this script is running when the game begins, doing nothing, uh, except for spamming hello, new hour. I don't care, we're keeping that for now. Um, so now we need to change our code. Change it to what you say? That's a great question. We're gonna look at the world package. One I've not mucked with too much. We want specifically get global script. All right, get global script. Player optional for multiplayer when there are more than one of us just hanging around. All right, let's do this. global script so we need a, this a name right here come on save it man this one I hope it works. <laughs> Would be neato. Okay. Yeah, so we... This all gonna get deleted if it does work. Um, let's take another look at our script here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete that. And let's actually... Since, since we know that giving a number larger than 24 works bizarrely as you might think it should. We're just going to let that happen if it do. Um, we're changing new hour, right? Okay, I feel like I can't get more prepared. Let's just do this. Make clean. We'll rebuild the plugin to remove my spam so I don't annoy myself. Around, uh, okay. Let's get our codes on. All right. Here we go. <sighs> In my excitement. Ooh. Sometime did change. I think actually maybe the right amount did. Hold on, how many days is... No, okay, so only two hours. Past. Hey, but it worked. Woo, props to Ferris. Thank you so much. I'm going honestly, I'm just gonna go with that until um we can directly change global variables. Um 
is 11. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Kuyando, for some basic subtraction skills that I'm lacking at the moment. So wait, it did work. Holy moly. We fixed it, guys. Now what we need to fix is my bunk distance calculation. So hold on. First off, I got to sit down. Join me. We're getting in the zone now. Thank you, Kuyando, Pariah, Ferris, everybody. We did it together. And I'm very happy to delete that. We don't need async anymore. No time machine. Uh, I can delete that. Uh, hold up. Check it out. This is how crazy people edit their plugins. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, so, yeah. Let's compare this side by side with Andromeda's math, shall we? And we can see where I goofed. Or maybe somebody can, okay? Um, now, hey, Smalio. <laughs> Editing the raw YAML. That's how I roll, folks. I'm crazy here. Emacs is my mod manager, okay, if you didn't know. All right. So if you're at home and you're wondering, geez, Johnny, what is the with the caret M? What is with that? If you use Windows, probably you've never seen anything like this. <laughs> yeah, we totally are. Um, so this is just basically window. This is Windows has a different way of representing the end of a line than Unix. Long story short. And when you're using Unix like I am, Linux specifically, this is what Windows line endings kind of show up as. And uh, if I get annoyed enough, I can do something like this. And I can do DOS, this fantastic little program called DOS 2 Unix. And just like that, they're gone. Ha! Take that, Windows. All right. They honestly were distracting, though, and it was hard to look at the script. So the equivalent math on my mod is right here. And I've bundled a few things together. So they're doing this x2 minus x1, right? That's this. That's all this noise. Distance gets square root of distance. So that's what I'm doing right here. Dividing by 8,000, which, as I said, is some weird arbitrary number. But so as to be like them, I'll go ahead and just disable my cleverness of trying to use the actual game setting. And we'll just write 8,000 in there. Also, in the interest of the tradition of puts debugging, we'll go ahead and print a bunch of crap to the console. And then that's really all they do, right? Um, so that's, this, I think, maybe is where I'm goofing up. We're going to say... Yeah, <laughs> thank you for the feedback, poor eye dog. Yeah, I'm kind of like, Voo. I'm kind of in the zone. So just bear with me. But we're doing this. I think we, I think we might do this. Oh my, what am I doing? Yeah, get rid of that now. I just doomed myself. Okay, so we're just passing it. Distance. Let's zoom out a little bit there. I goofed myself. Yeah, just plus two is fine. Okay. Distance, distance. So now what we're doing is we're setting game hour to the current game hour plus the distance. Let's do, actually, this is, a good, this is a good tune for this part of my, uh, distance. So you can't actually print message boxes to the screen from a global script. This is a global script, meaning in a server client context, the server is running it. You can't print messages. So what we do is we just send an event to the player. We announced the teleport, and I'm giving it the name of the place and the distance. So, yeah, that's kind of how that works, too, by the way. A little look at events in OpenMW Lua. Thank you, Ferris. I appreciate that, buddy, Jack. Hold up. Let's fix... Uh, well, so, okay. 
Let's roll with how I have it now. But I'm going to copy paste what you got. Much appreciated. All right. All right? And the game is still running. Tell you what. We're going to do the Todd thing and reboot. Reboot it live. It works. I played the game on Xbox, I know. All right. Now, for posterity. Mm. Nine o'clock. <gasps> oh, wait, you know what? I didn't do, I didn't recompile my script. My plugin. Because we got that editing the raw YAML pattern that we have going on here. It's easier than opening the CS sometimes. So, okay, game hour, 9 a.m. Lua console, cheat codes. Here we go. Six hours, wait a minute. Hey, oh man, it worked. All right, so cool. Let's bounce around, shall we? Wowee, I'm excited. Note that we got animation blending, which looks a little bit less impressive when your speed is a thousand. But yeah, here it is. Whoops, okay. All right, so where, where to next? Um, Caldera, Pelagia, let's go this way. Took five hours. <laughs> oh man, this makes me happy. I can't see anything and I don't even care. Six hours. Yeah! <laughs> so Sophie had a really cool idea to place an NPC by the signpost, and that's like sort of a somebody who will be like, hey, if you talk to him, he'll be like, hey, yeah, just pick a location, and, and they'll maybe charge you something based on some stat or something. But that's another... Uh, actually, let me write that in the code here. Wow, okay, hold on. It just occurred to me that we fixed this, so let's clean up the code, but we'll also write the to-do for the NPC, Sophie's NPC idea. All right, so that's fixed. That's fixed. Fixed, works, works. No crazy asynchronous stuff. Wow, I love it. Look how look how succinct this is. I just gotta say we're 45 lines of Luo, even including a comment pointing to the um. So now the question is, do I go back to using the GMST here? I wanna I wanna try that out. I wanna try that. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sophie. I'm glad you're pumped. I am, too, because as I said, this is, like, one of the many ideas I've had that is, like, born out of playing the game and being annoyed by something, you know? I'm sure we've all had that moment, right? Divinely inspired by Todd himself over the distance, like Dagoth or affecting his sleepers. <laughs> Thanks, Gonzo. Yeah. I kind of had a, f a hunch that this was worth doing, but I just couldn't get it. For a minute, I was too stupid to figure out how to use Raycasts. Then after a long night of skooma smoking, I just kind of use actual GMST. Thank you, Ferris, for the sanity check. I feel like that's the best thing. Because this, I have no, what even is that number? You know what I'm saying? Like, just some junk that they picked. And so this would allow people to mod that too, right? Okay. Um, so I should, for posterity, we're going to start over. It was like 11 when I went to Balmora before, I think. We'll get a fresh plug-in built. I think it was 11 last time. Oh wait, we need our hacks. All right, there we go. Three hours, okay, so yeah, I mean, I don't think that number makes too much of a difference in the overall maths, but it is still better, you know, I think to use a not a magic, undocumented magic number. <laughs> All right, so wait a minute, wait a minute. We've done a lot here and I haven't actually committed any code. Um. All right. Let's head into magic. So first off, I was trying to fix um for an unreleased project. If you were here with us last week, you know about my uh, mod website template thing that I do. Um, and so what I want to do 
even though we're probably going to do 1.0 or beta 1 of this mod later today, I want to make it so it hides the download button if there's no actual release, right? Because if you click this now, it's just going to be like, and nothing's going to happen. And then, and this shows too, which is like, there's no reason to show that actually. Um, anyways, I'm not going to fix that just now, but that's why I got changes here in the JavaScript. You know, it's a crazy morning when you wake up, have coffee and just start editing JavaScript, at least in my life. Okay. Um, yeah. You know what? Delta plugin. I don't know why you try to erase the quotes around my strings, but I'm not going to let you do that. All right, so what have we done here? We've added the global script. Props to Ferris. Thank you so much for that suggestion. We've removed our janky time machine activator. We don't have to do shenanigans with creating it anymore. Um, we have altered thusly our MW script. And we have removed the junk from our global script. Cool. Okay, so um, time cost... Awesome. Wow. That's great. Um, that makes me so happy. But you know what? I erased a bunch of to-dos here, so I'm going to place those back. Actually, this is the perfect time. I like how the global script has just become my unofficial <laughs> to-do list for this mod. That's how these things happen. Actually, you know what? I should... Okay, let's let's not be a dingus. Let's put that in the readme. I have a readme. So I do actually want to make, as I mentioned before, I do actually want to make a menu mode where when you, when you click the signpost... Or, or maybe we can add, like, an actual UI to the right-click menu that is, like, a travel menu. And if you're near one of the uh, relevant signposts, you know, some, some. But I want to add an option for a, a menu, like, again, like a crappier version of Kizma's travel mod they have for MWSE. So, so, plan features. Add an NPC to signpost locations to provide dialogue about the... Nice idea, Sophia. I love that. Uh, we're gonna get out of here. Um, and Erm, if you're still with us, and or if even Zach happens to be here, but Ferris, I think you'll agree, because um, I know you've written quite a few great Lua mods. We need to have like a community library of like helpful Lua stuff, because like yeah, teleport my followers. I feel like is a really general thing for mods to want to do. You know, Erm um, does it in attend me. Maybe Zach's multi-mark mod does it too, I would reckon. Um, you know, so we're all reinventing the wheel. It would be great to just have, like, a standard way. We need to make Zach Utils into, like, the unofficial standard library. Teleport followers as well. You use my time. By the way, Ferris, is it okay to ask you about Quick Loot? Since I got you here. I'm super, super looking forward to that. Okay, um, so we'll go rate this. Random. To stop midway and spawn an enemy. We encounter. Use path grid, path versus a straight line. Thank you again, Pariah Dog 13 for that one. That's a good one. And finally, uh, further to mine and Erm's discussion on Discord earlier. Um, right on. Yeah, I feel you on that, man. I just trying to stay up to date on the on the website stuff. Thankfully, I got some great people helping out. But uh, I was divinely inspired to do this. So no, cool. Just looking forward to it when you get it done, of course. Um, I'm going to just copy what I have here. Okay. 
Wow, I'm so pumped. And I was having coffee this morning. I wasn't quite sure. And it, like, vaguely occurred to me to try this approach. But thank you so much for the help, guys. And uh, Ferris for this cool idea. Another new line. Shh, I just force pushed again. <laughs> GitLab says no. But you know what? I don't care. What are you doing, Johnny? Oh, well, so... Um, by default, GitLab... Has... A sensible feature to prevent you from force pushing. Alright, I'm not gonna force... I'm gonna... No, I have to now. <laughs> hold up, hold up. I'm not gonna force push. Uh, five, uh, reset... I'm not going to cheat and rebase. I will just do another commit for my space. Ooh, account for movement speed. Thank you. I don't have to do just a white space commit. That's awesome. You mentioned that earlier and I forgot about it. Right. Um, that reminds me. I don't believe we are in any way factoring in time scale. And I'm not really sure, okay, if we look back at this, because actually, if you follow the mod list on the website, we do recommend an adjusted time scale. I like playing with longer days, personally. Um, War, hey man, welcome. Thank you for joining. We're just, uh, I wrote a fast travel mod for Morrowind OpenMW, and we're just... Doing stuff. Glad to see you, my man. I was uh, I saw you streaming Zelda last night, I think it was. <laughs> um Yeah, so so but right now we're not like looking at time scale at all. And I wonder where that would fit into the equation. I don't know. We don't have to decide that right now. But like the time cost of traveling somewhere should factor the time scale. Walking is for suckers, and if you ever played Morrowind. Which I think you're like me, man. You played it on Xbox 20 years ago. Like, the snail pace of walking was just an unavoidable fact of life. You pretty much beelined it through the end of the game so you could get Azura's Ring so you could at least have a decent amount of stamina to do anything. Then you can finally play the game, right? It's like a South Park World of Warcraft moment. Now we can finally play the game. <laughs> All right. Uh, clean. Build. All right, let's do this one more time. So my vision for the mod is, uh, <laughs> my vision for this is kind of like a more immersive approach to fast travel, but without the kind of the grind of the, as Todd intended, you know, uh, travel mechanics. You just played normal until I could jump good. Yeah, I think that's what everybody did too, right? Like, it's just a fact to be out of stamina all the time. Um, cool. So, okay. Haven't been to Balmore yet. Haven't been to Abbott. I've been nowhere. Okay, no, I'm in Satanine. Hey, oh, awesome. Cool. That works as intended. All right, well, uh, let's uh, let's cheat a little bit. I really wasn't expecting to solve these problems with the mod so quickly. You guys are awesome. And then just for posterity, let's... Right, exactly. Like... When you start a new game, like, I don't know, you should be able to walk to Balmora and back. It's not really that far away, you know, and then come and swipe Fargoth stuff from the stump, you know. Like, got a schedule to keep. Okay, that's all working. Good. I really want to go places today. Like, <laughs> how much hopping can we do from just signposts now? This is the new game to play. Ooh, okay, Aldrun, okay. Here we go. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, so with the longer time scale, you totally can, like, steal everything that isn't bolted down, run to Balmora, sell some stuff, and come back. You know, maybe get into a few fights, level up a little bit, you know? Like, 
Nobody got time to just sleep and wait around. You're crazy. <laughs> All right. Uh, hmm. Margan. So wait, we are in Aldrune. Here it is. See, in this one, I decided to dump you by the signpost, but maybe I should, since I have a hand placed, maybe I should put you more close to that. Uh, let's go to Margan. Cool. Okay, now where next? Margan. I'm in Margan, silly. You dingus. All right. I think we're at a dead end here. <laughs> <coughs> I remember seeing a meme a long time ago when Skyrim was new of like Dragonborn just standing there like in the middle of town. Wait because when you're waiting, that's like what you're doing, right? You're just like standing there for hours. <laughs> and when you think about that from an immersive perspective, it is a little awkward. All right. Well, I guess we got to go back. Yeah. Thank you, Pride Dog. That's why we mod the game, right? All right, where's the signs? My God, I can't even, here we go. All right, uh, I'm in ball. Yeah, I'm in there, okay. Buckmith, fine. We can only move around by traveling through signs. Where does that get you? I think we're gonna find out right now. If I could see Jack Squat, here we go. Ooh, I'm at an impasse here. I can't basically go anywhere. I, so, so the lesson learned is you can get yourself you know, stuck if you go to Alderaan. Okay, fine. I need Zacutils. <laughs> yeah, this is not your, definitely not your average prophecy going on right here today. All right. Ebonheart. We got to be a little more thoughtful about where we're going. Let's just go to the city. Yeah, this totally isn't cheaty at all, I would argue. Um, and if it costs money, even, you know, I think more appropriate. Wow, just auto going from here to Ayla Ode. Wow, okay, we're doing it. Five hours. Caldera, ooh. Okay, okay. And there should be signs on the other side of town. So, okay, we can allow ourselves to walk to the other side of town, I think. That's not breaking the rules too much. But wait. Okay, this is one of the signs I didn't handle. Boom! Okay. Let's see the bug here. 56. That's right, I can hear you. I don't know if you guys heard the... Mm. Yeah, we are not 56, 57, right here. So, we need, we need a guard here. Hey, Erm, welcome back, dude. So yeah, we actually solved a couple of problems with the signpost, and I'm just screwing around with it, fixing a bug here. Um. What do we actually use target name? Not until down. Uh, and we do. Okay. So what's happening is, for stuff that I have not hard coded in, you may recall this glorious file. Like all the TR locations. This is. There's no. This code is asking for the table of coordinates and stuff. Some of these are undefined. Caldera Mining Company. Um, I didn't actually make a location for because I didn't know exactly where that sign was. We could do that now. Um, I don't mind by hand implementing two more locations, but all this TR. 90, 89, I believe, TR signs. Not looking forward to doing that by hand. But in any case, so this is coming up nil. Trying to thoughtfully nest this. Oh, come on. My language server client is a little janky. Don't try this at home. Or use Visual Studio Code if you got any sanity. Uh, okay. Do all of this. 
Yeah, yeah, so that's that's kind of what I wanted to do for the rotation at least. Um, I wanted to write a function and put it on the interface that prints out the XYZ or the, the X, really the X rotation, I think is all I care about. Because um, I don't think there's an MW script way of getting that. Well, no, but that's a good idea for sure. Um, I think adding an interface function to print out the X rotation is appropriate. Maybe we'll get to that in a minute once I figure out how the hell I'm going to do this uh, in a way that doesn't suck. So... So for now, if there's a nil result, the console will remind us. And actually, I'm just going to disable that. We're going to have... That's where it goes in the code. Um, when we've got nothing defined. And so now this should not blow up. There you go. No blowing up. Ah, Pariah Dog, good question. Thank you. So when you find the sign for the first time, it memorizes the player position for future reference. Yeah, so what happens in the code, um, it doesn't teleport you there until you activate the sign. But in the code, let's scroll all the way to the bottom here and let's look at the action, the real action. This is what we're sending to the engine. And on update, wow, that's a typo. <laughs> on update runs when the game is not paused from a menu, it runs every frame. So when we're actually playing the game every frame, we are checking up here. We're running, as you can see here, we're running fine signposts. And in this code, we're looking at nearby activators. And we're looking for specific sign IDs, which is again defined in an external Lua file. I used some Unix foo to kind of grab those from a text version of the plugins. So we know what signs we care about. We have decided there are, um, and, and this is, again, we're still trying to say, has the player been there or not so they can teleport there. As I mentioned earlier, there's some cells that are destinations that don't have signs, so we had to pick things in those cells. And in one case in Mount Can, we had to actually place something. Heavy indeed. <laughs> but it all comes together nicely. Um, and I would argue it is succinct code. It's like a, a, the logic is under or a little over 200 lines Lua um, with comments. Um, so anyway, if it is a sign we care about that has a destination, then we make sure we can actually see it reasonably. Um, I would argue this cast ray behavior is a little janky because if you put some debug prints in here, you can note that in Sedanine, for example, if I'm behind Fargoth's house, I can still see a sign, but only if I'm moving. I don't even really know how to report that bug, but that's a bug, if you're still listening, Erm. <laughs> but then, so if we hit something, if we actually have seen the sign, and, it, and it's a sign that we care about and we have not already found it, we register the place that we have found and the sign that we have found. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so, for example, cast ray, the bug, thank you, Erm, is, for example, cast ray... I don't think I'm going to rig this up right now because I'm too lazy. But if I go stand here behind Fargoth's house, I will get a negative result for a hit. But if I'm moving, I will get a positive result, even if I'm still behind the house. It's a weird inconsistency. I feel like I'm still not seeing the signpost, even if I'm moving. In any case, that's just with a plain old raycast, not with the physics raycast or the, or uh, I'm sorry, the rendering raycast. But yeah, I feel like that's a bug. Or maybe I just don't understand... Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, cool. I mean, we're just going all over the town here. Maybe a signpost has larger collision than the visuals. Ooh, okay. That's a good question. How do we find out? Brace yourselves for extreme potato mode, but... 
Yeah, so actually I had been doing rendering ray, rendering ray casts, and I did figure they were too expensive for what I re really needed. Because you'll note in The Witcher, right, it's not always like a scientifically perfect you line of sight have seen the signpost. If you're like reasonably close, it will activate them for you, you know, even if they're like behind shrubs or something and you didn't see it. But yeah, as you can see here, the hitbox on this thing, pretty accurate, reasonably accurate at least. <sighs> Got some diagonal thing going on there. <laughs> I don't think that's a problem though. Yeah, I don't know. That's a that's a little annoying, not gonna lie. Okay, where are we going? Caldera. Yeah, so we wanted to get the mine point. Let's pick a point in the mine and let's make it daytime. And then we can pick the Guar Trail point too. And then I think this mod is ready at least for a beta release. Um, we still got to figure out how to make random points so TR can work. But at least this code, if you play it right now, this code is recording if you found TR locations. So even though we haven't implemented the proper support for it yet, the mod will remember. And when we add it, you can use those points. Um, and also, I just want to point out here too, this find signposts. Uh, function will shut itself off if you found all the signs so it doesn't needlessly start looking for things it's already found. Okay. So first off, do we got signposts around here? Yeah, this one. Okay. So I feel like we're going to spawn you right here by this sign. Narmok. Okay. I'm really curious... I guess we just have to straight up walk into that region to see, like, the Malagmar one. Um, tell me more, Erm. What is a better approach? Should I be looking for things when they're activating? So from a global script? When something in a cell we care about activates? Okay, so raycasting every frame feels a bit wrong. Yes, it does. Uh, the more you activate, the more I think procedurally spawning at signs actually work really well. Okay, Gonzo, thank you for that. I'm starting to think so too. At first I was like, no, 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 there's no way it can work. Kuyando, how do I determine the arrival position? I have uh, this file right here, targets. And it looks like this. And I basically have gone to a place and I've done player get POS X, Y, Z, and I've, I've done it by hand. But as we're kind of musing on here, whoa, as we're kind of musing on, I think like randomly spawning around the signpost could work. Um, and then we could make something happen for cells like Mount Cam that don't have a sign. Um, if the distance is longer than the ray length, no need to cast at all. Uh, I don't think I understand what you mean. So you're saying that we potentially don't need to do this right here. So we don't, we can bail here potentially. But what exactly, what exactly, I'm confused about what we're testing here. We don't need to cast the ray. Excuse me. Because my other thought was in the global script, we could just say like on object activate. Is it? Well, I'm doing radius one. Maybe I misunderstood radius one. Because no, infinite distance, absolutely not what I want. <laughs> I'm trying to approximate line of sight. Right, exactly. Um, That's a good point. Hmm. Make it found on activation. That's not a bad idea, Pariah Dog. That is still an option. Okay, radius is for casting a sphere. Yeah, okay, so around the player, I'm like bulbing a sphere. Not exactly what I want. No, no, that's not a terrible idea, Pariah Dog. Um, not a terrible idea at all. It would be simpler than trying to like see the thing with code. Um, and it's a reasonable approach to take if we don't make this work. Um, I will note... Looking at the Lua performance thing, it, there doesn't seem to be a huge cost. And if I pull up F10, 
Oh, geez. And I look at the Lua profiler. We're not... I mean, that's that's kind of a lot. But... It is what it is. Uh, casting from to exactly the distance. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm trying to see. So thank you. So I'm trying to see if there's a hit, if the hit thing is the player. Is that the wrong thing to do, right? So like if we've hit something and if the thing we have hit is the player and not like Fargoth's house, for example, if there's something in between. Um, maybe I'm, because I'm not like a Raycast wizard. I'm not Zach over here. You know, maybe I'm thinking about this wrong. Oh, I can actually delete that. hey -o. Maybe we can localize strings too before we say goodbye for the day. We got a couple, we have like a half hour. So yeah, I guess my question at this time is then, is this approach wrong, right? So we're doing the Raycast. Radius 1 is no good. I'm just going to, I guess... Let's open the docks here. Um, nearby. Excuse me. Cast ray. Cast ray options. So. Yeah, that's also, that's also a decent approach that could work for MW script. For like a fully MW script version of this, actually. That's not a bad idea, Pariah Dog. Good thinking. Alright. So we don't for collision type, I'm saying any physical, but maybe maybe I'll just drop the radius then, since that's not really what I want. I remove commas when I don't need them. Okay. We're not giving it a radius anymore. And actually, we're close the game. I'm gonna reopen it. I should print something when I allegedly got a hit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, that's that would totally work. Um, that would totally work without Lua. That's very clever thinking. I just like Lua and wanted to do it at that point. All right. So now, when my code thinks it gets a hit, we're gonna get some spam. They're gonna be a lot of hit. You got it, buddy. So, first off, it's not gonna endlessly print hit because it's testing here if it hasn't been found already. So when it gets found, it's gonna say it hit it. And you'll note right away we got a bunch of hits. And Erm actually asked a moment ago when you see the signs over the hill, and in fact, the signs we are seeing over the hill are the ones over there. Now, if I walk over this hill, we're gonna see the signs in front of us. Right? Yeah, okay. See, we have some more hits right here. So, you're right. My Raycast has an infinite length, and that's why I'm, I always wondered why I was seeing these ones over the hill. It's because I'm, like, endlessly Raycasting. We don't want to do that. So, okay, my caveman brain, we need to limit the length of the Raycast. Um... We're going somewhere, I think. I think my caveman brain is starting to uh, understand. <laughs> All right, so we calculate a distance right here. This is another thing I feel like that we should have in like a third-party lib, right? Like calculating the distance between two vectors, you know, it's like a basic thing. Um, that should even be an aux function, I would argue, but I don't know. Reveal distance, okay, okay. Where reveal distance is some, okay. Again, man. Oh. Oh, okay. Wow. See, I'm a dingus. I don't even know. Reveal distance. Okay. So the the question is like, what exactly is this? Is this feet, meters? You know, puppy dogs? <laughs> what is this number? I'm gonna put five. Um. Units. Okay, so like a unit being a cell is like 896 units, right? Okay, thank you, Ferris. Appreciate that. So 
40 okay yeah yeah thank you yeah yeah okay 40 nice. half a cell okay 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 so this is like nothing <laughs> we'll do 40 96. thank you for that all right so right here we're gonna say if so <laughs> Todd is God, don't you know? So position minus thing position. I gotta do that in a parens. Son of a... Does continue work like that in Lua? I think I just want to return. Right? Yeah, okay. I should have known. Good old Lua. All minimal and stuff. I love it. All right. Now, we should not spawn in. That won't work, I won't think. Well, we'll find out when I spawn in and get hits or not. Well, I didn't spawn in and get hits right away, but I should have seen these All right. I see okay no good so I don't want to return here I want to somehow pop out of the move the end further down so this whole thing. I'm not sure if I'm understanding. So this guy. Wrap all this stuff. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, and my check is wrong too. Sheesh. Or it and the wait, wait hold, hold on. <laughs> if we are greater than or equal to just greater than, get rid of the return. Okay, and I'll go back here and change that to less than. Right. Yes, hence drop in the return. Thank you. All right. I love pair programming. Yeah, I wish it, man. If it did, that would make this so much more awesome. Um, well, let's... Okay. So... If this works, like I'm really hoping it does, we should only cast the ray if the distance is short enough, right? Go to crappa. <laughs> I mean, we totally could do that. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with go to, right? Nobody considers it harmful. No hits. Good. There we go. We saw these ones. Hey, I think that works. Go to is supported. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I believe I may have used it, but I won't actually admit to it, so I've never used it. So if I walk over here, we should get another hit indication. When we get within half a cell, boom! Yes! Thank you, Ferris and Erm. That's another improvement to my script. Okay, so let's... Wow, we, we're just really cooking today, aren't we? This is awesome. So let's look what we got. I uh, fixed a typo. Okay, whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on. Fix a typo and erase some white space. Oh, 
Oh, you mean these two? So if all this and all this, I feel you. <laughs> there you go. It just works, I believe, is what is appropriate to say to that one, Ferris. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. All right. Um, distance and rack ID checks. Oh, I see. It just works. Let's not, uh, so let's make sure the script actually runs still, eh? So it's official, the OpenMW Lua library needs to have a continue label. It's as Todd intended. All right, well. Yeah, yeah, so this, yes. This is the fight that, this is a cover of the fight that plays when you fight Ultima Weapon. And he's like, I, or no, Antmo Weapon. He's like, I am Antmo Weapon. And de -de 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 -de. Right before they move everything and the end of the world happens. Good times. It's a good cover. I love it. It's a bit intense, <laughs> but I'm cool with that. All right. Sanity check the mod here. Let's go for a walk. Ooh. Give me my cheats. Took one hours. Oh, that's not good. Real Lua boss music. Yes! I've always thought that I'm not really a big fan of all of Jeremy Soleil. That's how you say his last name. I'm not a huge fan of his combat music, but that's because I'm a dude that grew up with Nobuo Umatsu tunes, right? <laughs> so, like, for me, combat music's got to be, like, JRPG intense. You know, I just... Uh, I turn down the music in Skyrim when I play that just because I... I think I hate the Skyrim combat music more than Morrowind even, and I don't love the Morrowind one. All right, stay on target here. Cool, okay. Everything looks good so far. Let's make sure we... So now what we're doing here, what does this change do? We are... Not a super huge, I'm not a big fan of super long lines. Lines. I just, I'm not like religious about 79 columns. 120 is reasonable, but this is just like pushing it right here. Like 130, no, 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 no. Okay, so we now have a sign discovery now has a real distance of half a cell. Cool. All right, Erm. Sounds good, man. Have a great one. Good seeing you again. <laughs> cool. So that's what we're doing, right? Um, I don't think it's really worth mentioning that I put that comment in there, but that's sort of outlining where our procedural placement is going to be. And then, yeah, maybe eventually we'll just replace all the hand-placed ones with uh, random points. Um, and then we'll just have to figure out, you know, there's a, at least... Uh, so let me commit this before I go on a rant. So there is... a. Uh four cells in Vanilla Morrowind where I have a comment here. It says, there's no signposts here, um, which makes going to those places a little problematic. Um, we have to have maybe some clever business about how to handle these, but the, the tough one excuse me we would basically need a way to know um If we're not, if we're going to do everything procedurally, we'll need a way to get rid of this, and then some way to say the player has entered a cell. There might be a way to do that. That's another thing, right? That should be in a third-party library. That is a reasonable pattern for any mod to want. Like, has the player been in this cell? You know, we should be able to find that out easily. 
Excuse me, I'm gonna eat a grape. So I don't know. Could very well be overthinking it. Let's push that up. Wow, I honestly did not think that I would solve so many problems with this mod. I should make more mods on the stream. <laughs> you folks have really been helpful. Okay. Where are we at? Mm. I'm all over. I'm just all over the place. There we go. Pipeline still going. And it's done. Cool. I don't know. I'm kind of tempted to just do a release now. Um, I don't have to worry about that change too much. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so that was cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. There is. There is for sure. And you could do that. So... This would be doable with MW script purely if you used a crap ton of globals, I feel like, right? Or if you had like, yeah, you would need you because you, you can't put data structures in a global. So it'd just be like a short. Um, you, but nonetheless, you could do like a bunch of globals, I feel like, and make it happen um, just for science. That would be fun to do. All right. Well, I guess we can jump onto this and at least get some of it done. Um, we have in the past week gone ahead and rounded out the 6.x bod additions list here and we've got a ton of stuff that was released this past year for the summer mod jam and the modathon this past spring you can catch a lot of that stuff here in the quest section that's where the majority of the stuff is um myself and the team we're going to be focused as i uh, wrote here fully focused on 6.0 <clears throat> excuse me at this time this list is in what I'm calling a soft freeze, meaning we're not planning on adding anything else. Interesting. You peeped me, pariah dog. So let's look at the ancient documentation from MW Script as I interrupt myself here. Cell. Cell changed, cell update, get PC cell. Position cell. There's quite a bit to work with here. For sure. Cell changed. Returns one for one frame when the player enters a cell. Okay, so it's one of those. <sighs> MW script API is weird and it has like on hit or whatever, I think is another one of these that's like not a function, but it's just a thing you test the value of. Um, cool, that's a good call out. I am not going to make the more advanced version of this mod, but I feel like somebody should. Because mine is only playable on 0 0.49 because of various uh, API-specific things. Um, well, yeah, going back to here, um, we have soft frozen this, but there is the in-progress modathon that's happening right now. Six teams are pumping away, spending a month to build six amazing mods. So really soon here, we're going to have some new offerings that I feel like all six probably may be candidates, you know, to go in here. So we're waiting. But for now, we're soft frozen. I don't plan on any more additions to this list except for my own signpost fast travel to the dev build only section. And yeah, we're so we're focused. Um, just a few things we got to publish, like Sophia's awesome clear blue sky patch. Um, and a couple of things that I made that I'm kind of I'm still debating too. like I have this. Uh, no pop. Come on, I can type. Uh, gen, no pop-up char gen is a mod I made that basically stops all the pop-up windows during character generation. So you can just skate on through pretty easily while taking care to set all the variables that need to be set and so forth. You can actually miss Fargoth's ring, though. It doesn't stop you and make sure you take it. I mean, because we've all played the game. We know how the menus work. Um, so yeah, I plan on publishing that and putting that on the lists, um, because like, I think total overhaul and stuff are for people who've played the game before. <laughs> um, okay. Actually, so one thing I wanted to do with my signpost mod is let's put localizations in. What's a localization? We're going to support multiple languages. Uh, 
and uh, I am a native English speaker, obviously, so that's what we're going to start with, but my friends who speak non-English languages, if you want to help out, that would be awesome. Okay. I think it's the player script where we're doing all this. Yeah, okay. So we got a... Uh, we'll say this is announce teleport. And as always, I have to refer back to my other mods to see how the hell I do something. Here we go. This is our little magic function, this L, L10N function. This is what allows us to select the right language. So this would be, we have to give it a, hang on. There's a place in, here we go. We're passing data. Like that. Do I need even format? No, so there's no call to string format needed, right? So I can just... L. Announce teleport. And then... Uh, oh, okay, and I have to change the... It has to look like this. Okay, so... Place... Hours. And we're gonna do place data name hours data hours. A V1.0 people who are speed running it, I bet. Okay. Now if I did this all right and I didn't derp anything, when we teleport to Belmora, it should have a properly formatted English string. Uh, any non-English speaker knows, uh, wants to help with a translation live on the show, we can, let's do a Deutsch test, huh? You with me? Or anything else? For now, we'll just try English. All right, cool, okay. We'll do Russian after this one then, thank you. Traveling to Balmora took, okay, so that. Hmm. Gave me the float. How do I? I might have to do string format here to, is there a way to just, Hmm. Yeah, I feel like I will have to do this. Hmm. I don't know if I like that. Let's see. We gotta do it. We gotta do it. I was hoping to get away with no format call. Ah, that's better. Okay, well, we need the format call. We need it. All right. Um, so, let's see, Russian would be R U. Okay, my man, Pariah Dog. Why don't you go ahead and give me the Russian equivalent, please, to this one? And I'll go ahead and set Russian to my other language in the game. We can. Uh, I think it's going to show up as boxes because I don't think I have Cyrillic characters, but that will suffice, I think, <laughs> for a test at least. Oh wait, you know, I'm gonna have to set it in my config.
Thank you so much. Awesome. Oh. Let me know what that problem is. And I'm going to just try to play this, though. Thinks my line is too long. Deal with it. Okay. Oh. Whoa, that's never happened. Right. There's the same problem for English. Um, what I'll probably do is I'll make a separate string, right? So there will probably be something like uh, announce teleport plural. Um, I'll fix that another time. For now, we'll just have incorrect grammar, but uh, I will fix that. Thank you. Um, if you want to give me the singular, so um, I don't know if this is the plural and maybe you want to give me the singular and I can just comment it in there, but yeah, that is a problem I got to solve. Good call. Um, so right here, I'll probably do something like, you know, if data hours one, you know, um, we'll, do, we'll do something like that there, but for now, I'm just going to accept the, the poor grammar. All right. All right. Let's get in the game. Except, uh, it failed to launch. So what we're going to do is this. We'll put that back. We'll go here. We'll set Russian. Oh, okay. Okay, wow. <laughs> Locales, are you fine? I'm just going to put are you there. Hmm, okay. Sing singular is that. Okay, thank you so much. I'm going to put that as a comment in there. Appreciate it so much. Plural is that? Is that? Okay, thank you so much. I'm going to put that in there too. We're going to have a couple other strings we're going to need uh, localized too, so we'll do that before we say goodbye for the day, but let's see it work, or at least give us some boxes, because I may lack Cyrillic characters. That's a great question. Us English cavemen are dying to know. English-speaking cave people. Oh, yeah, there we go. Nice. Hey, 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 cool. Nice. That's awesome. All right, so it works. So let's get the rest of the strings, huh? We got announce teleport. Um, plural. going to call it an ounce. That'll account for a float. Wow, okay, wow, okay. Thank you. Okay, that'll be... So I'm going to have to do some to properly handle it in Russian. We'll have some some extra logic. Thank you so much. That's great feedback. I you know, as a not as a just an English speaker, I want to support having Russian and Brazilian, you know, Portuguese, whatever I can, but I also don't want to do it janky. <laughs> I don't want to sound, you know, like I don't speak Russian. <laughs> All right. So, right here we're going to if less than 2 hours um so on the local message is announce we'll default to plural it's less than two hours we'll do announce teleport just one put the message there Okay. Um, so, okay. 
So for now, this is just going to be the plural one until we have the proper plural, plural one. Um, and this is going to be the singular one. Is this one. fix this later with more logic moving on okay so we've got the um, call it you're there you're in name <laughs> Estratosphere. I'm not totally familiar with that, but I this is another cover that I love. It's just like all over the place. <clears throat> and just like extremely good music. Okay, so we're gonna do this again. Check it. Thank you, Gonzo. Pariah the dog. Pariah dog thirteen, man. If you can help me out with a this one, and if you can also give me this one, and that will round out our Russian language support, and that'll be really great. I know, right? Thank you so much, Pride Dog. Awesome. I'm gonna throw that in there. This is like like one of the most productive streams we've ever had. Although we didn't really do Jack on the website. Uh oh. Languages. Who needs them? Okay, you're here, and then we'll go ahead and do. Whoop. Whoa. We're a little over time, but we're finishing this before we say goodbye, folks. Oh, come on. I'm gonna do it. Oh, let me know what the problem is. The place name has to be, oh, conjugated. Yeah, okay, I, I see. We have to explain it, I see. Oof. Okay, that makes it really complicated. If there isn't like a very neutral way that mostly works all the time, maybe we can go that route. Man, languages are complicated. I thought English was annoying. <laughs> Not saying Russian is annoying, but yeah, there's like lots of things to think about here. Not been. We're gonna pass the data. Uh, name. Okay, appreciate it. Pariah Dog, if you're not on the Discord server for my website, please feel free to join. There's a link um, on the website, moddingandopenmw.com. Please, let's continue, because this stream is about to end here in just a moment. Um, we may not finish this, and I you know, would love to get your input on this. So please, hop into Discord. Let's continue working on this. Um, but let's first make sure this actually works, eh? So it should tell us we're already in Sedanine. Okay, okay. So we should say we're already in Sedanine. All right, hold on. <laughs> It did do what I want it to do. So that's one, two. Flute, oh nice, right on. I always wanted to learn woodwind. I always wanted an alto saxophone 
Or maybe like a berry sack since I'm a bigger guy. Ooh, thank you, Pariah Dog. Appreciate it. We're just adding some Russian localizations before we uh, end the stream. We're about to say goodbye, though. Took two hours. Cool, cool. Oh, okay. Right on. Cool. That's fun. <laughs> Thank you, Arm. I appreciate it. I knew this was relevant to you. Okay, so this is... um. <sighs> All right, uh, so we need, so I'm doing, this would be, you've not been there, right? Yeah, Discord, come into our Discord, my man, um, and you can help us finish this out here. Uh, let me get a link for you. Where do I even link to the Discord? Help me out, Gonzo. Yeah, I'll, I got you, Pride Dog. Don't you worry. Thank you. Awesome. Gonzo, you the man. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Let's commit this. We got Russian, English, localizations added. Let's get rid of the commented stuff. Looks good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Pride Dog. I appreciate the input. Um, and we can get this thing properly localized. Let's push that away. Boom. Okay, there we go. Nice. Uh, we very, very well may see uh, the first release of this mod today. If it's a beta release or an official, um, you know, 1.0. Yeah, we had a really productive day today. Holy smokes. Um, we didn't really review issues, but I'm marking it anyways. Uh, we'll go over that together as a team later on, probably. Um, yeah, wow. Eight out of eight. Thanks for joining, everybody. Um, yeah, cool. Okay. We do. Erm, I'll talk to you more about that. Um, that's a great idea because I was actually discussing with the... The team yesterday, but we should have some like public voice meetings, you know, so people can join in and give feedback. Uh, but cool, maybe we'll do that next week, even. Um, awesome to see everybody. Thank you for joining. Happy modding, and we'll see you tomorrow. We're gonna do some gameplay, total overhaul tour. Until then.